I'm just, I'm like a thinner, better looking Jadisai. Taller. Is that what you're going for? That's what you're going for? Uh, no, he's, he's funnier than I am. I'll give him that. He's funnier than that. <laughs> but that's about it. That, <laughs> you won't give him much else than that. Won't give him much else. He drives a cooler car than I do, too. What does he drive? He drives he has, a Jeep. He has a pretty tricked out Jeep, which yeah. is pretty pretty fun. Who's got that Tesla out there? That's my new car. Son. Yes. I traded in my, didn't trade in, I sold my 2005 Toyota <laughs> Tacoma. <laughs> yeah. Didn't. I was telling these guys, like, in terms of technology, it didn't even have an aux cable. Yeah, I mean, that's it amazing. Like, it had a CD yeah. player uh-huh. and an FM radio. <laughs> and a key and a heater. I mean, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I've I've gotten a major upgrade in terms of technology. You probably don't know what to do with all that technology. It's pretty awesome. I bet. It drives itself, which is even more awesome. Like through the mountains of North Carolina, it drives itself? Uh-huh. That's terrifying. Well, but it's very, like, it's a lot less white knuckles on the steering wheel because I can actually relax and trust that it'll do its thing which is awesome and take a nap and no it's great it won't let you take a nap i uh you have to keep your hands on the wheel right he's trying no you don't don't have to keep them on the wheel 100 percent of the time but it does remind you every couple of to touch it yeah you have to kind of apply so we were talking about this yesterday there's a company a guy who knows somebody in his garage sells a weight so hopefully they'll fade into some of that so we can actually hear me talk about my car a little bit but, <laughs> brag a little bit yeah about brag it. a little yeah. bit um but yeah it's it's, it's awesome That's cool. anyway today we're joined on the mxu podcast by two of my friends nate ellis is here he's the social media manager for mxu and has been on the podcast before as you know but we're also joined today by our friend joe henson who is um System engineer, system tech extraordinaire, uh, works with Phil Bledsoe, actually, with Sam Hunt uh, when they're touring, but also does other engineering stuff. Is a great front of house engineer in his own right, great monitor engineer. You may have seen some of Joe's content on the MXU platform. We mm-hmm. talked about basically the role of a system engineer and how he thinks about PA design and deployment and all kinds of stuff um, when he's doing his work. So hopefully you've dug into that and have gotten some sort of helpful tips from Joe in that course. But more than that, Joe's a good friend and um, just has great insight because he's also a part of his local church here in Knoxville when he's not on tour. So Joe, we're glad to have you today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yes. So what's what's new? Like what's your summer like now? You know, Summer, in terms of touring and mm-hmm. festivals and gigs and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we just finished up a spring run on arenas, and then we've had a little bit of downtime, so chilling a little bit. Yep. And then this summer, we're going to do some amphitheaters um, for a couple months, and then we'll go uh, hop up to Canada later this fall, I think, to do some arena stuff as well. Okay, cool. So. Phil was on here a few episodes ago and was talking about just in terms of the team, like rehearsals and how that how the prep works for you guys transitioning from one tour to another. And it's actually not a not a ton of rehearsal time. So for you as the system tech, like I know that things are different when you're in an arena versus being outside, you know, being in an amphitheater versus being in a big arena. Um in terms of your prep, are you just kind of like, you're thinking, okay, I have my toolbox, I've got this way of thinking about things, and that's kind of the same no matter where we are? Or is there anything that you're fundamentally changing, getting ready for a, a shed tour versus an arena tour? No, it pretty much stays the same. Gear-wise, stays the same. Um, I'm fortunate enough that my front of house ecosystem stays together all year. Oh, that's So great. my drive rack... So all that patching is still the same and stuff like that. So it's really just the only big change from spring to summer would be um, Amperax and how they're patched. Because obviously when they go back to Spectrum in Nashville, yeah. they're going to use it for other things. It all gets deprepped. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be different Amperax, different amplifiers. <laughs> and in the DMB world, you're dealing with different amplifier IDs and IP addresses. So that's all that I'm really having to update in my master tour file for my rake out file. Got it. But then I've got um, 
I mean, there's great guys over at Spectrum that, you know, they'll do 95% of the prep and then I'll just go in and either sign off on it or just make some changes here and there whenever I get the gear or get in front of the gear for the first time. That's cool. Yeah. Also, you said country music in Canada. Yeah. Country music in Canada. It's a thing. Wow. Yeah. Who would have thought? Well, have you ever watched the show Heartland? Uh, Barely. Okay. So my wife and daughter were into that show for a long time and it's kind of, it's a Canadian produced show and it's kind of set up in the Northwest of Canada, like Alberta, Calgary Calgary area. So Calgary is massive for rodeo and other like horse related, farm related stuff. So I can totally see country music fans all over Canada. Maybe not, maybe not Toronto, but certainly in the Northwest. You hear about those country festivals up in Canada and like, it is rowdy. Yeah. It it is crazy up there. Well, especially Hmm. in the summer because the days are so long. You know, you get above the border and it's going to be light until 10 o'clock at night. Wow. So they're just, it's a all day party, all I'm day sure. All day long. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By Keep the rocking. way, Canada, just random facts. I have, I have two of my favorite random facts about Canada. One, 95% of the Canadian population lives within 100 miles of the U.S. border. Wow. So basically, most of Canada's population is right at the southern border of Canada. Mm-hmm. But Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is the capital of the province of Manitoba, Winnipeg, it's a city near like Minneapolis, like that part of America. Okay. That is the geographic center of North America. So there's just as much land north of that city as there is all the way down to the tip of Mexico. Wow. So that shows you how massive the Canadian hinterland is because there's so much in the north that has no people. Hmm. Wow. Who would have thought? Anyway, random stuff that is in Jeff's brain. (laughs) I need to- I know very little about Canada to have even a comment about this, so- well, it just makes me feel like I need to defragment my hard drive because I've got way <laughs> too, too much, much random information. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so is there a, like, of what you know of the of the tour so far, is there a particular amphitheater or a particular city that you just look forward to in that because of aspects of, like, either the way it's laid out or the way it sounds or just, like, they've got the best catering and I can't wait to be there again or... Whatever. Yeah, none specific. I mean, there's some, if you're doing an amphitheater tour, any open air, you know, you get any open air amphitheaters where you don't have a roof and it's just PA and nothing bouncing off a roof or anything like that. It's, it's awesome. It's magnificent. It's like it's the best day. Some Texas yeah. headphones right there in front of you yeah. when you're at front of house. Um, but then it's really cool going to some of these historical places that have been there for 50 years, you know, yeah. and, and being a guest in those houses and yeah, it's cool. That's cool. And places like that, they usually have, like, their house tech is usually pretty great because they've sure. been there for a long time. Absolutely. They've, they've got different shows coming in every day, and so they're just yeah dialed and in. Those people that work there are, you know, they ba- practically live there all summer. So yeah. it's like, it's usually really good hospitality. If there's, you know, if it's by a lake, they'll have fishing rods for you. Or yeah, it's just, it's cool hangs as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what... um. Like for you guys as a crew, like when you're in, when you're in the flow of a tour, like what is your, what does your hang time look like? Like you're not, you're not necessarily just up against it all day, every day. So when you have an off day or you have a break during the day, like, is there a thing that y'all kind of rally around is like, Hey, we're going to, you know, or is it every man for himself and you just kind of go off and do your own thing. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, I mean, one thing that I love about this camp is it's very family oriented. So, you know, even if like you all don't have your thing that you're going to be doing or whatever, like just spending quality time together and not be gigging, you know, it's, you'd spend enough time on a stage together or setting gear up together that like when you're just sitting out by the bus or whatever, like you're not, it's not work that you're talking about. You're just, hang and talk about family or whatever you got going on in life, you know, it's, it's really, it's a brotherhood out there for sure. That's so cool. That's you know, cool. there's, there's a lot, and we've said this a lot around MXU for years, but there's a lot that a church team can learn mm-hmm. 
from a crew like that. You know, so many times there's this sort of us and them mentality between the booth and the stage, or there's just a, I'm only here to execute this task and then I'm going to be gone. But man, so much of what creates culture among a church team has to do with that kind of relational aspect. So I think, you know, all of our worship and production teams could learn from settings like that yeah. who do that really well. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, man. I've, I've you know, mixed it churches where I'll walk in, go to front of house, and if I don't make an effort to go down to the green room to see the worship team and the band, like I literally have no interaction with them. And then I'll take off and it's like there's sometimes yeah. there's no community with that. Um it's not always that that way, but it's just interesting. Yeah. 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 I know for me, I come from a uh student ministry background. And so like I, especially during summer, I'm always looking for ways for my volunteer team. How can I, whether it be get them with students and, you know, or simply just like get them with their families, get around families. Like I know one time we, I just bought like a a gift card to this uh, local ice cream shop and was just like, hey, bring your family and we're going to pay for your ice cream. Yeah, and the community that that brought up, and then honestly, like we had faith conversations with people who didn't go to our church. We're able to talk about the student conference coming up over the summer, and so it's just like getting around, just creating opportunities for people to be together. It makes those, you know, when you're showing up for a seven a.m. rehearsal or eight a.m. rehearsal, whatever it is, it's like cool. I actually like. I know what you do for work. Yep. I know how you I know how you live. I know your wife's name. I know your kids' names. That changes literally everything about a whole team and a whole culture. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't. Like you're saying, an ice cream cone goes a long way. A very long way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And who yeah. doesn't like ice cream? I, it, if you don't, you're crazy. Yeah. Or maybe you're lactose intolerant, but Hey, they've got dairy free options. They've got dairy free. Okay. <laughs> Side note. Okay. Rabbit trail. Yeah. <laughs> There's an ice cream shop in Greenville. Shout out to Greenville, South Carolina, Claire's Creamery. They have dairy-free options that are made with coconut milk. They have dairy-free coconut, dairy-free strawberry, dairy-free chocolate. Okay. It's the best. We've we've got that in Knoxville. We've got, we've got Cruise Farms, baby. Shout Cruise them out. Farms, dairy-free. Uh, dairy-free. Brewsters. Oh, yeah, dairy-free. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Claire's Creamy has it dialed in. It is the creamiest, richest, like... Who would think? But coconut milk has a lot yeah, of fat, so it's fat. it's. But cool. it's delicious. Yeah. So whoever's in charge of Claire's Creamery, if you happen to be listening to the MXU podcast, first of all, why? I don't know why you would do that? <laughs> but maybe they serve in their local church. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Maybe somebody from their church took everybody out to ice cream. That's right. They interacted with the <laughs> ice cream barista and got them involved in coming to church. Is yeah. it a barista? I don't know. Oh, a scooper. Okay. It's better it's better name than scooper. You had me fooled. I I just I breeze right past that. So speaking We're, of ice cream, I've always I've always said uh churches are kind of like ice cream and uh all melty and sticky. <laughs> No, there's just different flavors. You know, you got yeah, different yeah, flavors yeah. of churches. I like it. But as long as they're preaching the gospel, it's it's ice cream. It's it's good, right? It's delicious. Yeah. And uh it's time for a mix review. Okay. You like how I did that? Ice cream, church, mix review. Sure. I just broke it down. Right. That's great. So Pointless talk now. to us a little bit about what we're gonna listen to today. Yeah, so this is a church uh from here in town, Knoxville. It's called the Point Knox. They're downtown and uh they submitted their live stream and uh Chris, I believe is the guy, he gave us a little bit of context. I don't know if we want to get into that now or hear it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the, a lot of the tech stuff because I'm not a very techie guy. Okay. But uh, I'll pass that to you because right. we have it right here. Well, let's just take a listen. Okay, let's and listen. And then we'll, then we'll unpack what they're doing. Yeah, man. 
Cool. So, a couple of things that I would notice right away. Yeah. You know, we're we're seeing a video of their live stream, mm -hmm. but it's just a single camera locked off shot, probably from front of house. So that tells me that they're not using a broadcast room. They're not using a separate console. Yeah. It's all kind of coming from what they have to work with. So in this case, um, Chris kind of gave us some backstory yeah. on what they have. So they're, he's mixing on a Personas 24-4. So it's, you know, not the most modern, not the most flexible of consoles. And he's basically creating a an aux mix to pre-fader auxes that are going to uh, the live stream PC via a Focusrite Scarlet. So he's really, you know, you can hear even in the mix, like the room is super live. Mm -hmm. It's probably in a very traditional kind of cathedral looking space. Yeah. I've not been to the church, but some of the guys around here have, and they know this context. So obviously super live. If you're in the room, it's like the drums have, the drum mics probably almost have to be off. Yeah. So he's sending those auxes to the live stream to be able to get that drum sound. And so those kind of things considered, I feel like he's doing a great job. Yeah. He's definitely making lemonade. For sure. Out of a situation that's not ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I think the drum sounds are great. Yeah. Like the player is obviously a good player. He's digging in. Like there's a ton of presence to those drums. You know, you can hear each instrument. You, know, you can hear electric. You can hear bass. You can hear acoustic. Um, so it's like, man, the, the pieces are there. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be helpful, though, if we talked about maybe how they could maybe even take it up a notch. Like, what are you hearing that you would say maybe we could provide some helpful feedback? Yeah, I, I agree with the the instruments. Each piece of the music sounds good as a single source. Yeah. Looking at it at the overall picture, maybe working on the balance a little bit of the mix. Yeah. Um, but then also, I mean, where, you know, he's just got an aux bus, um, maybe even trying to do like some overall compression on it to try to kind of piece this, bring it together a little mm -hmm. bit. A little glue. To tighten things up, yeah. yeah. So, but I, I do notice that there is a keyboard player. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in the bottom left of the screen. Like, I heard the guitar... I heard the bass, I heard the drums, but keys to me could be a little louder. Yeah. And maybe that's a way to kind of add some glue. So if they have a pad as part of their piano patch, maybe we could kind of boost that a little bit to provide a little kind of some something to tie it all together. Yeah, for sure. I think that might help. And the other thing is, you know, with a room like that, he's probably not he doesn't have the need for any kind of reverb or effects because the room itself is the reverb. Yeah. But for the live stream, it feels a little dry. Yeah. You know, the vocals particularly are like, man, I wish there was a little bit of something to put them in a space other than just what you can hear from the room mic. Um, so that, you know, reverb covers a multitude of sins, right? So to, to maybe help with some of that intonation, some of the, the flaws in the performance, they're so exposed online. Mm. So maybe there's a way to, you know, have some reverb on that aux as well that you could use as as a way to kind of glue glue things together. Yeah, maybe even, you know, some sort of a uh, room verb or something a little bit shorter yeah. to kind of give a little bit of presence to that vocal could yeah. help as well, help it sit in the mix. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And I think from like a musician's perspective, I wonder you know, as we're talking about everything kind of sounds separate. I wonder if some of these positions or musicians are paid, if they're part of the church or how often they all play together, because sure. it kind of sounds like, you know, I mean, we're, we're saying it doesn't sound like a cohesive unit. And so it's like, yeah, maybe they're not playing, they're not a playing band. together as a band. Yeah. And so we can, we can pick that apart very easily yeah. when we're watching. Yeah. You know. Well, and it's so easy to sort of armchair quarterback all yeah. this stuff, but it's like, so much of it depends on context. 
you know, so for those of you watching or listening, it's like, you know, we want to, we want to try to be as kind of gracious as possible. Cause we don't know. Yeah. Maybe, you know, this isn't their normal, whatever, whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, we're, we're taking one thing out of context and trying to, you know, analyze it. So who knows, but, you know, hopefully, um, you know, I, what I love about his description of their setup is you can tell, like he gave us a pretty detailed explanation. You can tell that he's trying to get better. Yeah. He's wanting to learn. He's been to every MXU event. You know, he, he, the headphones he uses to mix on to test his, his broadcast mix are headphones that he won at a, at a giveaway at an MXU live event. So it's like, you know, I love that he's committed to this idea of, Hey, I want to submit this, even if it isn't, the greatest broadcast mix out on the internet. Yeah. Because I want you guys to help me get better. So oh, it, it's better it, than I did. It's better than a lot of places. <laughs> when yeah. I got started. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think um, the other thing to consider, and I know this is delicate, but like when we were listening to this, you know, it's on YouTube and we checked and there were 30 views. Yeah. So another thing to kind of be mindful of is, Hey, what is the purpose of their live stream? Yeah. Are they trying to get it out on the internet or is it just for a few people that have to be home and want to tune in? Mm-hmm. You know, if that's the case, I say great job. Yeah, like Absolutely. They're not they're not necessarily trying to draw people to their service. It might just be an archive thing. It might just be a hey, we've got a few shut-ins who want to experience the whole service. Mm-hmm. Or it may be, hey, this is as good as our worship is going to be online, so maybe we just stream the talk. Yeah, you know who knows. I mean, different churches can approach it different ways, but there are so many factors to consider when you're quote analyzing somebody's stream mix. Yeah. So I I, I just want to encourage these guys. It's like for for the tools that you have and the you know the way you described how things are routed and what you're having to do to even make it happen. Yeah. It's like, man, great job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agree. Definitely. So speaking of limited resources and kind of how we move to the next level, you know, I love that Joe's here today because we're going to talk a little bit about kind of optimizing what you have yeah. in terms of your PA and then how to maybe consider when it's time to upgrade or move to something else. You know, a lot of people get enamored with the idea of, hey, I got to have a line array. You know, last couple episodes of the podcast, it's like, do you really need a broadcast console? Do you really need an LED wall? This might be, do you really need a line array? And it's not to say that those things aren't great. Like, I, there are churches that need a broadcast suite. There are churches that need and love and benefit from having LED over projection. I think as technology changes, you know, those things are going to be important conversations. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of times, you know, people think a line array is going to just kind of instantly solve everything. So, Joe, what would you say to that person who is like, okay, I maybe I'm aspiring to get to that point, but I'm not there yet, so how do I kind of make the best out of what I have? And then in addition, okay, when it is time to upgrade, how do we decide just the best way to go about that? Yeah, I, I mean, what I see a lot of times, and I think a lot of people deal with is um, – maybe even taking a, a couple steps back from there of looking into your console and seeing what, I mean, it, I've talked multiple times about week after week making adjustments inside a console or maybe cutting a little bit of an EQ on your PA. You keep doing that week after week and three months later, it's a completely different sounding PA. Yeah, it's like death by a thousand paper cuts. Absolutely. Yeah. And on top of that, if that's the only PA that you're listening to day in and day out, week in and week out, you don't have a reference of where you were when it didn't have all that going on. So it's like, maybe go start taking things away, start putting things back in yeah. the EQ. Undoing the changes. Undo the changes. Yeah. yeah. I, a mm-hmm. lot of times when I was mixing week after week in churches, you know, I would make adjustments and then maybe every month or so I would go and start trying to put stuff back just so you don't get into the weeds too far. That's good. Yeah. So I, that to me, that would be step one before you even start looking at the PA, like check That's the good. sources. Yeah. Check the sources, make sure that, you know, things are 
really what you think they are. Exactly. Yeah. And and the other thing, not just checking the sources, but double checking and consistently checking the components themselves. You know, sometimes it's like, man, my you know, my PA just doesn't have any high end. Well, could be you have a blown driver. Sure. Could be you have an amp channel that's down. Could be that there's a cable that's problematic. So, you know, there's a lot of things just in terms of general routine maintenance yeah. that need to be attended to. Yeah. And if that's something that you're not sure on how to tackle, I mean, local integrators, they deal with that stuff all the time. Yeah. And they would, I feel like they would much rather get a phone call saying, hey, can you come check all these components before it's, hey, can you come and replace this whole entire PA because it's not working or it sounds bad, Right? you know? Yeah. It's like start small and then work your way from there. That's good. And then there's people like you who are professionals at this who aren't always on tour year-round who might be available to come in and do a spot check and sure. do a, you know, a day of consulting or, you know, somebody who doesn't even know how to tune a PA right? to bring in somebody who does it every day. It's like, man, it's worth the day rate of your time to come and just optimize what we're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, you can save hundreds of thousands of dollars just from, you know, checking your P's and Q's before trying to sign a big check to a big old PA Yeah, that maybe isn't going to fix the sources like we were talking about. Yeah. And sometimes getting that new PA is going to expose or further expose the flaws in your sure, sources. Sure. It's like, man, our singers didn't sound that out of tune until we got this new PA. <laughs> or you get a PA put up and installed and tuned and worship still sounds the same. It, you know, that's that's a thing. Yeah, that so, is a thing. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So what about Pastor Nate? Yes. From a just from a stewardship standpoint, you know, I and again, there is a time to do upgrades. Mm -hmm. There is a context where a new line array is the right choice. So I'm not saying that you don't ever need a new PA. I mean, these components will fail yeah. eventually. Yeah. But from a sort of pastoral leadership standpoint, what advice would you give to a production person to even start to have that conversation? Because sometimes pastors go, okay, is it gonna make a 100% difference? Is it yeah. going to be a 5% difference? How am I going to know the difference? Like, how do you how do you navigate those waters? Yeah, I think, I mean, starting and taking a step, a further step back, Joe, like what you were saying earlier, I think was, was brilliant of like, okay, let's take everything off. Let's start from scratch, see how it sounds, see what the real issue is, because, I mean – whether you're a small church like I lead or you're a mega church, like there is still a budget and throwing 200, 300, 400, 500,000 at a PA or however much that might be a new set of point and stick, you know, speakers like it there, that money could go towards other things. Not saying the Sunday gathering isn't important right. because it is not saying that, uh, I mean, we have videos all, all on the platform about the number one, uh, the number one channel on your mixer is the pastors, not because pastors are so cool, but because we're all working together to deliver the message of the gospel, which is the most important message to ever be shared. And if that's not being done with clarity or if, you know, there's fuzz and whatever it might be like, then we're not doing that well or to the best of our abilities or yeah. stewarding uh, the finances well of the church. And so I think we have to take a step back and go, yes, I, you know, if, who wouldn't want a new line array? Who wouldn't want, you know, a new mixer? Who wouldn't want a new LED wall? Who wouldn't want new gear? It's fun to have new gear. But at the end of the day, you, ha you have to ask the question and go like, is this the best use of our resources for our church right now? Yeah. And yeah. if the answer is no, we can we haven't tried this yet. If you haven't turned turned over every other every other stone of like, well, have we thought about this? Have we thought about that? Have we thought about uh man, like how is it how will this be for our volunteers? If we haven't answered those questions first before you swipe the card or before you pay the invoice online, then you are doing your church a disservice and you yeah. are sp spending uh not your money. Again, that's your that's your church's that's your congregation's money. 
that's not your money. So it's easy for you to swipe because maybe you maybe you have your tithe in the game, but like it's not it's not your money. So it's easy for you to go like, yeah, of course, let's let's get a new PA. That's easy. Let's get a new LED wall. Yeah. Because it's fun for you to get that, but it's not your money. And so steward it well. That's I've awesome. I've seen consoles go into churches that I'm like, there's not a tech there that's qualified to run that console. Yeah. But it's a cool new toy, you yeah. know. It looks cool. And it's then cool. they three months down the road, they find themselves in a hole they can't dig themselves out of and don't know why. It's like, well, you probably bit off more than you could chew. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think especially now at like this post COVID church church culture, I think we're at a at a interesting spot where you know, so many churches have you had to start live streaming. You had to start buying better cameras, thinking about lighting, all these things in in much different ways because of the uh constrictions that were had. And now I think a lot of churches are here going like Okay, do I ha- do I still have to do this? Right now, what do I do? Now, what do I? Yeah, yeah, do I still have to be doing all these other things? It's like, you know, I think taking a step back and looking at the whole vision of your church as a whole, and like, uh, I mean, so many churches are whether it be cutting off live stream and just posting services, doing all these other like, I think it's it's time that we start thinking about church a little bit differently because I mean we're not in the we're the church as a whole has been operating in this 20th century church model of big buildings of all these things. And we're not in the 20th century anymore. And so we need to adapt. We need to change. We need to think about doing things differently. And, uh, I, I think I'm excited for, to see where, where the church as a whole, especially in America goes. Um, especially now that the church in America is actually not leading the way as far as salvations and new people coming to Christ. Like we see the churches booming in Asia, booming in Africa and uh, booming in even uh, Southern America. And so it's like, we're kind of, we're, we're getting, we're getting looked at as America. Like, Hey, what do you, what are you guys doing? I'm yeah. so glad you have these bells and whistles, but bells and whistles are not the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, let's as a whole, and especially as a production community, like what is our role in in helping the gospel be spread in excellent ways uh, through broken and messed up people? And that's what we get to do. Well, that'll preach. Yeah, so, I, don't have I like anything to, like that. So it's, if you feel like you just got kicked in the shins, yeah, right. <laughs> Just uh, thank Nate for that. I'm sorry. No, it's good. I think it's a, such an important reminder. I think it's huge um, because we are tasked with stewarding resources, sharing the message, spreading the message, making disciples. It's like none of those imperatives have to do with the newest, bright, shiny new toy. So as fun as those are and as important as they are. You know, I think you talk about the the church moving forward. It's like, I want to believe that technology is going to help us do that, yeah. right? What's next for the church is going to have to be married with what's next in technology. Yeah. And so, you know, but advances in AI aren't going to be able to replace the words of Jesus, Yeah. right? So it's like, how do we navigate that well so that we don't miss this yeah. at the convenience or the uh, exposure of the other side. And we also have to understand that we are fighting a battle that's already been won. And so... Oh, now like, you're really going to preach. Yeah. I'll, this will be my last, <laughs> my, my, my third point. Uh, the band can come back up. We can get the yeah, pad going. get the pad going uh, and start, you're ready to pray. But I mean, like, we're fighting a battle that's already been won. And so we can take some of the pressure off our shoulders and prayerfully go like, Hey, like how, how can we through the word of God, the presence of God, the spirit of God that's within us believers, how can we uh, rest in the finished work of God and in the finished work of Jesus while also knowing that there is a task at hand. And uh, so like, we don't have to have it figured all right now. Like this is, yeah. this is his church and uh, he's, the gates of hell will not prevail. 
Yeah. And so we can just sit back and all sit back and, and rest in Christ, but also go, we've got work to do. Yeah. And uh, well, it takes us back to the church we listen to. Yeah. The battle belongs to you. Come on. It's like we can just rest in that. Yeah. And I think that's that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I love the heart behind all of that, like message, gospel, stewardship, all that, and how technology plays into that is super important. But it's been a while since we actually talked about the nuts and bolts. So let's review real quick. What are the like first steps, best practices? Like somebody thinks my PA is dead and I got to maximize what I've got, or this is terrible. I want to upgrade. Like just review again. What are the quick, like first steps? Yeah. I think, uh, checking your console, making sure you haven't made too many adjustments over the time that you've been mixing on it. Um, checking components of the PA, you know, make sure everything's working 100%. Yeah. Cabling, make sure all the cabling's 100% as well yep. before checking on the PA to see if maybe a replacement is the way to do it. Yeah. Could be components, could be cabling, could be, you know, or it could be really time for an upgrade. Could. I think it's it's hard, though, to give sort of a blanket answer because everything is context. Everything, you know, so many churches, it's like, if I only had this brand with this amount of boxes, it's like, well, maybe. Yeah. But you don't know. Like, there's thousands of churches that can benefit from this conversation, but I can't tell everybody what they need to do. It's like, get a trusted professional, get an integrator, get somebody who knows what they're doing in there to assess yeah. the situation. If something is truly damaged, we can help you fix it. But I can't tell you the one size fits all solution other than those great tips. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation. I love having you here, Joe. I love your wisdom, Nate. Um, I want to remind everybody, though, that tomorrow mm -hmm. we're dropping a new course. It's all about the basics of Resolume. Yes. You know, as we talk about technology and talk about sort of video processing and all that stuff, Resolume is a topic that we've gotten a lot of questions about. Mm -hmm. So our friend Caleb is dropping some knowledge bombs on us all about Resolume. Joe, you're connected to Caleb. Yeah. You know him really well. Sure so do. Smart we're kid. excited. Oh, yeah. We're always excited to have smart people yeah. to talk about things that I know nothing about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spot <And> on. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we're excited about that. So be on the lookout for that. It's dropping tomorrow on the MXU platform. Uh, we also have pop-ups coming up. Yeah, uh, We're through with our Columbus pop-up, but we've got Dallas and Fort Lauderdale and Seattle coming up. So Dallas is our next one. It'll be August 20th at Milest Milestone Church in Dallas. Yeah. So go to getmxu.com, get your tickets. You're not going to want to miss. If you live in the DFW Metroplex. It's a lot of people. You're not going to want to miss the MXU pop-up that's coming in August. Yeah. It's so, going to be awesome. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys again for being here. We'll uh, see you next time on the MXU Podcast. Mm -hmm.